Welcome to Literary Libations with Librarians. And this week we are excited to share books with holiday spirit. That's right, it's the holiday special of Literary Libations. As we share our holiday favorites, if you're interested in getting your hands on any of these titles, there are several different ways to do that. The first is to call your local branch of the Monroe County Library System and speak to the staff there, and they will be more than happy to assist you. If you prefer to do it on your own and you're interested in a physical version of the title, you can request hardcovers, paperbacks, audiobooks on CD, large print through our online catalog, and that web address is on your screen now. If you're interested in a digital version of our titles, you can use one of the two platforms that the Monroe County Library System offers. The first is Overdrive, and the app for that is called Libby. And Overdrive offers downloadable ebooks and audiobooks. And then we also offer Hoopla, which has downloadable ebooks, downloadable audiobooks, and also movies, music, and graphic novels. And as we share the titles, um, a visual will appear on your screen that has a picture of the cover and also lists all the various formats that the titles are available in through the Monroe County Library System. And there are five of us this week. And since it is our holiday week, we are going to share as our introductory question, what is giving us that holiday spirit this year? And I am Jennifer Grineski, and I'm the branch librarian at the Dundee Library. And I've been trying to decide, and I think what's giving me holiday spirit, and I am usually not a shopper, but it's actually like picking out gifts for people. So um, my husband and I don't usually do anything major for each other, but I've got a couple little things that I think he's going to be pleasantly surprised about. I like shopping for my son and um, today I was actually working on my nieces and nephews and for them because they're older they usually get cash but then I always make sure they get two books a piece and that is really challenging when you're buying for teens and young 20s and you're going I'm sure they'll like this but I do it every year I have since they were littles and so I've continued to do that because everybody needs more books in their lives. So I think that, and then the packages arriving put me in the Christmas spirit because I'm like, yay, they're here. And then I just think about like how, how happy I hope that this will make them, that it brings them a little bit of joy in this wild and crazy year. So I think that's actually been my favorite thing so far this year. So that's mine. And also with us this week, we have Kristen Brown, who is the reference librarian at the Bedford branch. And what is putting you in the holiday spirit this year, Kristen? Don't forget to unmute yourself. <laughs> I'm going to put a sticker on my computer that says <laughs> mute <laughs> yourself because I do that every time. Um, so this year, the first thing that came to mind was hope because I, I feel like I'm enjoying this Christmas season because it's going to bring about the new year and we're gonna have some new changes hopefully. So just knowing that this year may look a little different, our Christmas, our holidays may look a little different, but hopefully it's just this year. And so if we can just carry on that hope into 2021, it'll be a year of growth and healing and loving. And so that is what's giving me holiday spirit right now. Just keep on trucking through and I'm just hoping that next year is, you know, a really great year, so. I'm hoping it's better than this year. <laughs> <laughs> That's the hope. <laughs> yes, so much hope. Yes. Thank you, Kristen. Also with us this week, we have Sarah Valerius, who is a sub throughout the library system. And what is giving you spirit this year, Sarah? I love the lights. Every mm -hmm. year is the lights and the Christmas music, but not like Halloween time. Can we wait till it's November a little closer? <laughs> but I'm always walking around and the iPod is going and Christmas is blaring. So if you want to jam, come to my house because there isn't a Christmas song that you can't sing that doesn't bring a smile to your face. It doesn't make you happy. I mean, even the Grinch comes on and you're like, oh, I love this song. Turn it up. Got to jam, right? <laughs> I do get tired of Mariah Carey's. <laughs> I only want you for Christmas. Like, hi. Uh oh, that, that, uh -oh. Kelly's giving you the I'm side like, eye. Yes. Nope, I'm on that level too. 
I'm on that level. I'm just kidding. No, that's, that's a favorite in our house. We play that one over and over and over again. Really? I yep. love Silver Bells. That's my absolute favorite. I love it. That's I, that's my favorite. Mine is uh, Christmas wrapping. Do you guys remember the wrap, the Christmas wrap from the 80s? No. Huh? Oh, yeah. I'm sure up. I probably Christmas, heard it Christmas on the wrapping. Amazon Christmas station. Because we've oh, heard yeah. some it's weird called, things. It's by the waitresses. Oh. oh, yes, I just, I just didn't know. Yes, yes, I guess. Okay. Yep. Or my, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or like my other favorite is, you know, the one where they're counting down the, the all the things you hate for Christmas and the guy's like yelling, hanging up the lights. Do you guys know oh, that? Yeah, I know I'm out. yeah. Oh, maybe. My so, nomination for the strangest song that they've played so far on the Amazon Christmas station and this has been out for a while, but I'm, I'm not a pentatonics person, so I oh, hadn't yeah. heard it before. So you listen to Amazon Prime and you get on their station and they just play music. And they played a song by pentatonics called, I think it's White Winter Hymnal. Go out and listen to that song. And it talks about something, we're not sure what. A good version of it would have it be a snowman that has a scarf around its neck, and if you remove it, their little heads fall in the snow. That's a Fleet Foxes song. So yeah. look up the look up the original because it's not meant to be a Christmas song. No, well, Pentatonix does that a lot. Yeah. I have issues with Pentatonix <laughs> using like Coleman's Hallelujah like, as a Christmas song. But no, but I'm like, why would you even like, because I went out and read the lyrics because I was like, did I just hear a Christmas song where people's heads are falling in the snow? <laughs> <laughs> so I went out and looked up the lyrics. Um, like, that's not a Christmas song. Just because it has winter in it, Pentatonix, doesn't make it a Christmas song. Yeah. Bless their Pentatonix heart. So <laughs> my husband is in the other room, but his phone's connected to the speaker, and he heard us talking about Christmas rapping, and now he's playing the song. <laughs> oh, I can hear it a little. Thanks, Kevin. <laughs> Thanks, Kevin. He's so helpful. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Way to go, you eavesdropper. Yeah. <laughs> and I will let's see I will have Kelly go next then um Kelly I didn't practice your last name so but Kelly's here and she is the branch technician at the South Rockwood branch library and she has a new last name recently that I will mispronounce because I didn't practice it so I will let her say it and then she can share what's putting her in the holiday spirit um, Beister is how you say it. Beister. Beister. It's not um, spelled the way it sounds. I just want everybody no. out there to know that. <laughs> not even <laughs> close. No. Mm -mm. Um, uh, so I think this year, because we just moved into our house about a month ago, um, it's been just decorating the house in, um, in our new space, especially the outside has been a lot of fun. Um, so that's what's getting me in the holiday spirit this year. Oh, and shopping, which I'm not usually a shopper either, Jennifer, but um, I really enjoy shopping this year. And I don't, I don't, I don't know if it's just because that's the little bit of happiness because the year has been so crappy. I, I don't know, but yeah. Perfect. So yeah. Um, and then we usually do Christmas cookies too with my mom. Um, and so I, I'm looking forward to that this year too. We usually make a whole day out of it. And the kids are a little bit older this year, so um, I'm excited for them to be able to do some things on their own especially um Kristen's oldest and my oldest they have um a really big interest in baking so I think that will be fun this year we can give them actual jobs with that aren't probably supervised well maybe just with Ben for sure but I don't know Celia killed it in that cooking video <laughs> yes she so. did she's got it down well, we have another one in the works if I can get it to edit it so stay tuned everybody <laughs> I love the videos and Jen's done one with her boys and just recently did story time with them. I love the videos with the kids in them. And Jen McCarty is a reference librarian at Ellis. And what is bringing you holiday spirit this year? Oh, um, I think the biggest thing for us has been um, Christmas lights as well. We drove around last so so Saturday um, and just looked at lights like and before Thanksgiving. We had to go to the boys' school for something, and there was a person like right down the street putting up his Christmas lights, and you could tell it was going to be a production. So they kept asking, like, can we go to that house? Can we go to that house? So we finally went there Saturday night, and that's where we started, and it is a production. He has signs outside with a, 
a radio station to tune into and then the lights dance. house you're talking about. Wow. It's it's awesome. has like the arc, like the arc in there. Oh, yeah. Right? He's got a whole like he built this. Oh, huge, yeah, they do that every year. I know. A house yeah, like tunnel. Yeah. Um, It's it's a yeah. whole thing. So we started there and then we just went to a bunch of different neighborhoods. Um, And then last night when I got home from work, they both were like, can we go look at Christmas lights again? Aww. So after dinner, we got in the car and we went and we, we started there again because they thought that was awesome. And we just went and looked at lights and it's been really fun. And it's been that's not something that we probably would normally do in a busy year especially on a random Thursday night just to get in the car and go look at Christmas lights. Um, but, you know, nothing's normal this year. So that's been a lot of fun for us and decorating our own house. So decorations in general, decorations are, are making me happy this year. Nice. Thank you, John. That's such a nice memory. Those things that maybe because you'd be like, no, it's a school night and we got to yeah. get this and this. And you're like, eh, let's just go. Let's like, go yeah. have some fun. Hey, you're good. good. You're already in your pajamas. Let's go. That's right. <laughs> nice. All right, and let's have let's have Kelly start us off with her books that have holiday spirit. Are you muted, Kelly? No. Oh, are you just waiting on me? Oh, yeah, sorry. I guess I was waiting for the screen. <laughs> I, I'm getting there. It just takes me a moment. Oh, no. All right, I'll get started. I guess I, I always like, I, I don't know. I forgot which one was first. I think Happy <laughs> Merry Christmas Squirrels was the first one. All right, we're on, we're on the same page now. Um, cool. So Merry Christmas Squirrels is my first book. And this makes me so happy because um, the book is written by Nancy Rose and she uses actual squirrels in this story. And she sets out her camera on her deck and she puts little props out for the squirrels to interact. And then she creates a story based on the pictures that she gets. So this is the story of Mr. Peanuts and his cousin, um, his cousin, Mr. Squirrel. And um, Cousin Squirrel wrote to Mr. Peanuts and asked him to come and spend the holiday with him. So um, <laughs> the book is amazing because the pictures, you, it shows Mr. Peanuts getting ready to go to Cousin Squirrel's house. So he has to um, snow, snow plow his driveway. <laughs> So like the little squirrels like holding on to the snow plow um, and then he has to clean out his um, car because it has snow over it. So there's like this convertible that he's like cleaning the snow off of. And then um, so he gets to Cousin Squirrel's house and they have a great day out in the winter in the winter time. But now they're getting cold, so they have to make a fire. So then they show the two squirrels around the fire um, and then they go inside and they read their favorite books, which all are nut based. And then they each get each other peanuts because, you know, they're squirrels. Um, so I just love that the, she uses squirrels and they're real and there's props like the pictures are super um, funny and they look believable and the kids just like there's the snow blower. <laughs> How there's long does it take to wait to get the picture that she needs though? It, she oh, said it takes a little while. She's always got her camera running out the window so that she can catch them. So there's, she doesn't have to like sit there and wait for oh, them okay. to be caught. But um, let me show you the fire one because that one kills me every time. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and then, you know, they're reading like the Nutcracker. It was the nut before Christmas. Holy cow. This is yeah, genius. like it's, I know it's amazing. So she wrote another story too that's not Christmas based. Um, it's just the story of Cousin Squirrel coming to see Mr. <laughs> Peanuts, but it's like summertime. But like it's just so funny. So she said she hides peanuts in the different props in order oh. for them to interact. So it looks like it's a story. Um, but she writes like her whole little story at the end of the end of the book too. But whenever I do those as read-alouds or I bring them home for the boys, they just think they're hysterical because I'm like, look at this squirrel snow blowing his driveway. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, so, squirrels got to take care of things too. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that that one always makes me excited and um, happy. And then the second one um, that I always liked reading out loud is another kid's book, and it's Olivia Helps with Christmas. And when I was a youth services um, person, I love taking this book to the school because who doesn't love Olivia? She's quirky and she, you know, beats or she she goes to the beat of her own drum. Um, but, you know, she's kind of like Curious George and like she tries to be helpful, but it usually doesn't work out sometimes that way. But her mom is incredibly patient, but also has that mom look, which I appreciate now as a mom <laughs> where she's like, 
Thanks, Olivia. <laughs> so Olivia tries really hard. It's a couple of days before Christmas and she's trying her best to help her parents out. Um, a couple of the things that stick out in my mind that make me happy and I think everyone can relate to, especially if you have parents, um, if you are a parent and you have kids who are always trying to help. So one of the scenes is Olivia, um, her mom asked her to decorate the table for Christmas um, Eve dinner. And so she is looking for a centerpiece and she ends up cutting the top of the Christmas tree off so that she has a mini tree to put in the middle of the <laughs> table for the centerpiece. I also love when they, um, it's Christmas Eve night and they're all waiting for Santa and, um, or maybe it was after Santa came, I don't remember. But anyways, they're singing Christmas carols around the um, piano and she just rips out Gloria. <laughs> the, the page is just, Oh, it, it's just all the whole page it's, it's the amazing. best christmas song like singing in church and going to church mm -hmm. service when they sing just angels we have heard on high i'm like yes yeah i can't yep. sing at all but i love hearing other people sing it yeah yeah it's that's like one of my favorite scenes um and so they you know it's just the story of they're waiting for santa there's no snow still no santa and then of course the miracle happens there's tons of snow santa comes and the book ends with her um, dreaming peacefully of being part of the Nutcracker Ballet, which is so super cute. So those two books um, make my heart really happy, and they always put me in the Christmas Christmas spirit. Thank you, Kelly. Those are good ones. I have to look at that squirrel one. And let's have Jen share her books with Holiday Spirit next. I just did the not mute thing. Um, <laughs> my <laughs> First one that I want to talk about is not super, it is holiday, but it's also a little cynical. So, you know, bear with me. Um, Holidays on Ice by David Sedaris. If you know David Sedaris, he's an essayist. Um, he's done a lot of books. He has been like a commentator on NPR. Um, he's a humorist. So this is, Holidays on Ice is a collection that is part like essays, like memoir kind of things, and part just short stories. Um, it is a little bit cynical. There's definitely language. So if you're uncomfortable with that, you know, you might want to skip this one. Um, but my favorite, there's a couple of different stories in here that I really, really like. My absolute favorite, though, is called Santaland Diaries. I wanted to, hopefully that's right. Um, but when David was a young person, he got a job as a Macy's elf in their Santa village. And so this is him recounting his experiences as an elf and it's pretty funny <laughs> um like i said there is some there's definitely some language so you know if you have a problem with that you definitely want to skip this one but it's very very funny i mean you can just imagine you can just imagine what you I, know what goes on in I those feel situations like being an elf at a mall or a store would suck your Christmas spirit right out of you, know, like really quick. Well, and that's some of the humor that I find, like that I really enjoy is it talks about things like how monotonous it gets, and so some of the things that they start doing or he started doing to like make it more entertaining, or being you know Macy's in New York City, like seeing celebrities, and you weren't supposed to point them out, but occasionally you'd be like, "Hey, people in line, if you look right here, you can see Phil Collins," you know, like doing that kind of stuff. Um, but so that's that's really funny. And then there's another essay that I or a story. This one's actually, well, it's whatever. It's in there. It's a short thing. But it talks about um, other cultures and other countries' versions of Santa. Specifically, he spends a lot of time on the Danish Santa, which is Sinterklaas. And some of their stuff is really very. Um, it's it, it's not very modern. <laughs> and it's very um, un-PC. Sinterklaas does not have elves. He is accompanied by Schwarze Piet, which is Black Piet oh. or Black Piet's multiples generally. So he goes on this whole thing about that and explaining that sort of concept and like how, you know, as an American looking at it going, you, you what? You, you, Santa Claus comes with what? <laughs> and they're like, no, no, it's just the thing. It's not, no, no disrespect. It's all good. Um, very funny. Like I said, it's 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 definitely not a feel good necessarily. Like, 
oh, I can't wait to go sing Christmas carols. It's more like, oh, this is a little bit cynical, but this is funny. <laughs> so that's holidays on Elf, our holidays on Elf, holidays on ice. Um, if you know David Sears, and if you don't, if you like humor, if you like essays, if you like a little bit of cynicism, those are just fun. It's just a fun collection to read. I actually just listened to it again. Um, we have it on, like I think Hoopla has it on audio and it's read by David Sedaris with a couple other people thrown in. It's really fun, really fun to listen to. My second one, a little more traditional, is called the Sugar, I'm gonna have to wait to see it on the screen, Sugar Cookie Murder. I think I'm getting it right. Um, this is by Joanne Fluke and it's the, yeah, I did get it right, Sugar Cookie Murder. Uh, <laughs> it's actually the sixth book in a series. But this is a series that you don't really have to read them in order. So if you wanted to just start with Sugar Cookie, you'd be OK. Um, these are cozy mysteries. And if you're not real familiar with cozy mysteries, they're they're light and they're fun. Um, the main character in this is Hannah Swenson and Hannah owns the cookie jar. She owns a little bakery in Minnesota and it's a small town. Honestly, it's kind of one of those small towns that you probably don't want to visit because every couple of months someone turns up dead and Hannah's in the middle of it. But this particular book, um, they're testing a cookbook. The whole town has put together a cookbook and they have this huge holiday potluck to share all of the recipes from the from the cookbook. And of course someone dies and then, you know, it's shenanigans ensue. But what I love about this is um, all of her books have recipes and this particular book, usually it's cookies because, you know, she owns a bakery. Um, but this particular book has all of the recipes that they mentioned for the potluck. So there's all kinds of, everyone's laughing. I don't know why you guys are laughing. You're making me nervous. <laughs> I'm, well, I'm watching Kelly and Kristen and they are cracking each other up. I don't know what's going on there, but there's a sister thing going on. And then I started smiling, so I don't know what's going on. You guys are making I'm me self-conscious. And you're both you're muted. There's a sister thing going no, on. No, I'm just smiling. I'm not laughing. I'm just smiling because, like, I didn't have rest. I just feel like she face. keeps looking at me, and so I'm <laughs> trying to <laughs> <get> <laughs> hold my camera's on. Laugh. Sorry. It's the age-old sibling conflict. Oh. She's looking at me funny. <laughs> I'm just looking at the camera. It's so weird. I'm just saying, anyway, like, sugar right cookie here. murder. Um, all right. Really, really fun. I love it's a small town. It's in Minnesota, so they're talking about all their holiday stuff. Um, and then there's a mystery and it's just super cute. And I love that the book actually contains all the recipes. So there's this particular book um, is shorter than all the other ones. It's more of a novella length than a full on novel because it has a ton of recipes. Usually her books have like, you know, seven or eight of the recipes that she mentions. This one actually has the entire, basically the cookbook for the late, it's Lake Eden, I believe is the name of the town. But that's really cool. So you see different, and it's Minnesota, so it's totally you know casserole heavy. Um, but I love it. I love I love the series. It's a super fun light mystery series, and any book that has food in it is a good thing. So those are my. I picks. love books with food. Me too. Also, Christmas cookies. <laughs> my background. Same. I think like you, that Jen. kind of book is super popular. Like we've had tons of patrons that come in and they just go through those series. Like once you start them, I feel like they some patrons, I think we just we know like, OK, they're going to want this next one. <laughs> yep. Because I think, I think the a the is the recipes. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, all of the titles like the first book, the first book in the series is the cookie chocolate chip cookie murder. And then there's like carrot cake murder and lemon meringue pie murder. And, you know, they're all like that. So it's I it's like fun. the clever mystery names like there was one like one feta in the grave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I always think of like those really corny mystery things. They just make me laugh. <laughs> One feather in the grave. <laughs> I just like that there's a whole genre for cozy mysteries. Yeah. yeah. Or, well, and, and um, cozy, cozy mysteries with recipes. Like, yeah, is, right. can you go wrong? I just, I just love that. It reminds me of, um, you know, watching Agatha Christie shows on TV. You know, it's a cozy little town. Someone gets murdered, but look, tea. Exactly. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, like I don't know, it just goes together. I love, I love those sorts of stories. Thank you, Jen. And let's have Kristen share her books filled with holiday spirit next. All right. So my first book is The Polar Express, 
which is a pretty well-known book, especially around this time of the year. Um, it's by Chris Van Allsburg, and if you've watched any of our previous uh, videos, you may have known that I did a book previously by Chris Van Allsburg, The um, Widow's Broom, and so I'm super attached to his illustrations, plus he's a Michigan-based author, um, and so I just really appreciate his work. But The Polar Express is, is to me, the epitome of kind of the holiday spirit so it's like the definition of magic and and the saying that believing is seeing or hearing in the situation in this book and so it's based around this little boy and it starts with him and he's listening for santa's sleigh bells um, when in fact what happens is he ends up hearing the steam engine out in his street and so the the train ends up taking him to the North Pole, and there's this really interesting conductor, which I'm always going to associate with Tom Hanks now because uh, there is a, an animated film that goes with this book now, and Tom Hanks plays the conductor. And uh, the conductor tells all the kids, Santa Claus is going to pick one of you, and he's going to ask you what you want for Christmas so that you can have the first gift of Christmas. And so he ends up picking this boy, and all he wants is a bell from one of the reindeer's harnesses and so he ends up getting this bell he sits down with santa he gets to hug santa and he gets back on the polar express and realizes that he doesn't have the bell anymore it fell out of his pocket and so he is devastated and the train drops him back off at his house and he goes upstairs to bed and then he wakes up christmas morning and after all of the presents have been opened he gets a surprise um, and still to this day, no matter how hard I try not to, I still get a little choked up reading the end, um, just because the end talks about growing up and kind of losing that innocence and that wonder um, because his parents cannot hear the bell. And so he shakes it and he can hear it and his sister can hear it and his mom goes, oh no, it's broken. And like that just kind of gets me in my heart because I'm very aware of that feeling and, you know, adulting gets in the way and your brain gets so used to doing all these adult tasks and thinking analytically and I have to do this next and I have to do this. I have all these things on my list. And if you really sit down and watch your kids, they don't think like that at all, obviously, because they don't have those responsibilities. But it's just a really good reminder that holidays are about believing and coming together and it, you don't necessarily have to hold something to know that it's there. So uh, this is one of my favorites. Um, the other one that I have is The Sound of Kwanzaa. And this one is by Demetria Tokumbo. Um, and another reason that makes me think of holiday spirit is kind of you know that togetherness that you have during the holiday season which I think could also be translated to the togetherness of everybody and so going outside of your traditions going outside of what you normally do and thinking about how other communities celebrate um, and how they what they do during this holiday season and so Kwanzaa starts on the 26th of December and it goes until January 1st and so it's a seven day it's a cultural celebration. So it's not a religious holiday, it's a cultural holiday. Um, and then just as a little backstory, um, because I feel like in my personal experience, I've always known that Kwanzaa existed, right? Like it's, they, they kind of touch on Kwanzaa in school, it's on the calendar, you know it exists, but I really didn't know anything about this tradition and just how beautiful it is. And so just frequent backstory, it was created in 1966 by Dr. Molana Karenga, and it just is to celebrate and uphold the black community and to really highlight and celebrate the African and African-American cultural history and heritage. And so this book is really great because of, I really chose it because of the illustrations and just the, the the verse so it's not like um, a traditional children's book where it says oh this is Kwanzaa this is what Kwanzaa is about it's very much um, written in a way that's that's light and easy to understand each page of the book talks about each day of Kwanzaa um, and so it has a lot of really good vocabulary in it it talks about the traditional Swahili uh, words that they use um, to signify the 
the principles of the seven days. So each day they they um, celebrate certain principles. So there's unity, self-determination, collective work and responsibility, cooperative economics, purpose, creativity, creativity and faith. Um, and so each is represented by a candle. There's there's a whole bunch to it that I feel like is not as widely known as it should be. And so just from reading this book and reading it with my girls, I instantly was like, let's look up some traditional music. Let's look up some traditional fabrics. Let's learn more about traditional African culture. And then I personally went and looked up more about um, how people practice it today. So as an adult, what do what does the black community do and how do they celebrate it? And so if you're not familiar with Kwanzaa, I highly suggest picking up this book because it was a really good entryway for me to learn more about it um, and just to appreciate it. It's a really beautiful cultural holiday that can be applied to anybody because all of those principles are are things that we can all we can all learn to to use in our daily lives and be better people. So. Thank you, Kristen. And let's have Sarah share her books that have holiday spirit. Well, I was the one I was asking Jennifer right away, like, are we doing a holiday books? Because I can already think of them like right now. We were in the branch too, and I was like, uh, I can think of them right now. So I have two good ones. They're an older series and one's an older book, but they're still loved and they actually are all checked out and on hold. So my first one is the Christmas Joyride. And this one is also a book club book. So this one's really good for that too. But this one is a feel good holiday spirit giving. It just reminds you of what Christmas is about and it's the Christmas of giving. And um, so this one is about Joy and she's 85 years old and um, she is going to move to Phoenix, Arizona to be closer to her sons in a retirement community. She's by herself. Well, she's not doing it just on a plane ride that her sons think. She's going to deck out the RV and drive <laughs> there from Chicago to Phoenix. And they're definitely going to hit Route 66. So think of Grandma as she's coming to visit and all Grandma's crazy quirks. Well, she talks her neighbor into joining her and her neighbor's um, in her late 20s, early 30s. I couldn't remember like her exact age. So she had a husband who like left her high and dry. So she house is being foreclosed on. She's broke. So she's like, I don't have anything else to do. Let's go. Well, little does she know it's not just OK, we're driving to see the countryside. No, Joy has been writing a Christmas blog and she's going to go and tell everyone like everyone's writing her blog, letting her know Christmas wishes. Well, she's going to grant your Christmas wish on her way. So it's following grandma on in this crazy RV that's loaded and just think of the Griswolds not like the Griswolds who pull up on the RV think of the house on the Griswolds <laughs> RV that's what they're driving and so they're driving through town and you get to like meet her and like the people she's gotten to know and who she grants her wishes to and why she chooses them there's a lot of plots and twists and I don't want to give them away the ending is kind of like oh that's where she left it but you still feel good while you're reading this book because she does spread Christmas cheer everywhere. She just sings Christmas songs out anywhere because why not? It's Christmas time. Let's just sing. So that one is really good. It's a really good tearjerker moment. It, but I mean, we have it in every audio. I think it's large print book club, like you downloadable. You you want to read it. It's out there. You can get it like, <laughs> right now. <laughs> And my other ones are Ellen Hildebrand, and she is one of my favorite authors. First of all, she writes everything on an island in Nantucket. Who doesn't want to live on an island? I just think it's always beachy on an island. Well, this series she wrote about it's Christmas time. And um, all is four books in the series, and I couldn't just talk about the first one. So I was like, Jennifer, you have to put all four up there because if you start one, you're going to read it all the way through to keep you entertained through the new year. But this book is all about drama. So if you like drama, think reality TV show, this is it. Because the dad is uh, married to his second wife and they have one child together. He is graduating high school, but he has three older children that are married and have children. So they have that drama going on. She wants to bring everybody home for Christmas. 
in the inn, I'm sorry, I should have said that they, they run an inn, in on Nantucket. So he's like, come on in, you know, he brings his ex-wife in with his new wife. You know, the ex-wife is a famous bro news broadcaster, so everybody knows her face. The current wife is like, really? Her? Like, the whole town shuts down when she's here. Well, there's drama with that, you know, with the ex-wife and the current wife. And then, you know, they're throwing this big holiday Christmas party while dad walks in on... He, she's kissing Santa Claus, right? And I was like, oh, yeah, you're hooked from there on out. And I'm like, <laughs> she picked Santa? Santa Claus. Mm -mm. <laughs> but it's it's all four, all four books follow the same family, the same drama. The ending was a little teary, jerky-eyed, but they do figure it out. But you can follow this crazy family and all their ups and downs and drama and what goes on in her four book series. They're quick, easy, little reads. So if you want to read them in a day, you can. It might take you a week, but you can stretch them out to the new year. And they're 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 really good. If you love drama, this is this is right for you. Thank you, Sarah. I love family drama novels. That's my thing. So <laughs> <laughs> so that would get me turning the pages right away. And I and then I start talking to the characters where I'm like, what kind of decision are you making? Make better choices. So that sounds perfect. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> and for mine, um, my first one, I also, apart from family drama novels, I also love myself a little bit of horror. So this Secret Santa came through the library system and I couldn't resist that cover. It feels like a throwback to the horror paperbacks of the 80s. Um, so you get Secret Santa, the gift that keeps on giving. How could I not pick that up? No matter how terrible it is, I had to get my hands on it. So I read it. It is in the library system. And my review was, it's not great literature. Nope. Not even really great horror, but it is fun and it's campy. And there are, it, there's at least one moment where I went, like, it's genuinely creepy. So it is New York City in the 80s, and young 20 something Lucy is trying to make her way as an editor in the publishing world. The company she was with got bought out by another company that got bought out by another company, and now she's just trying to find any job. She sees a posting in the paper with the Blackwood Patterson Company. And Blackwood Patterson is known for publishing snooty literary books. And Lucy is known for publishing horror novels. But she's managed to get several of the horror novels that she edited to the bestseller list. So this little publishing house kind of needs something because they're not making money. So she goes in for the interview kind of miraculously and surprisingly actually gets the job and it's in this old building in new york it's kind of creepy the elevator doesn't work and it's about two weeks before christmas and everybody in the office is real quirky and some of them like her and some of them don't but they're getting ready for their secret santa and she figures she isn't gonna be part of it. Everybody's already chosen names, but comes the day of the office party and sure enough, there's a gift for her under the tree and it is her secret Santa gift. And it is a weird, creepy, doll stuffed thing. And she doesn't think too much about it. And then horrible things start happening as are want to do in horror novels. And so people get crushed again under piles of papers and People get hurt in other various ways. And so she's trying to figure out what's happening and if it has anything to do with this weird creepy doll, which um, of course it does. <laughs> so that's the basic premise of the book. Oh, if doll. you like, pardon? And it's always, it's always a doll. It's always a weird creepy doll. Oh, and so the best part doll. about this news. one was that the doll, and I didn't write the name of what the doll is because there is a real name for it. It's actually based on a German Austrian folktale. And it and the this folktale features this character that the doll is of. And when I started reading the traditions that surrounded this, 
it's seriously weird, not just in the horror novel that like she fictionalizes, but their folk tales, seriously strange. <laughs> like, like really, this is how we're celebrating. And this in particular had to do with Epiphany, the 12 days after Christmas. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, yeah, it was weird. So I felt like the folk tale that this horror novel was based on was even stranger than the horror <laughs> novel itself. So that was good times. You know, in case you need a Christmas, new Christmas tradition, I'll need to look that up and see what the name of that was, because everybody will be wanting to Google it, I'm sure. So that's Secret Santa. It's a super quick read, probably just a few days to get through it. Um, if you like horror and you want to mix it with your holiday traditions, try Secret Santa. And then my other one is Hanukkah at Valley Forge. And this one is has such beautiful illustrations and it takes place at Valley Forge. Um, the Revolutionary War has been um, it's been about two years. It's not going well for the American soldiers. They're hungry. They're tired. Some of them are lacking boots and coats and what they need and it's cold. And George Washington is walking through the camp wondering how they are going to survive any longer that maybe that maybe they aren't they aren't and he comes across a soldier who is lighting a Hanukkah candle and if you know about Hanukkah the miracle of Hanukkah is that the the Jews revolted against um those that were oppressing them and were controlling their temple and telling them that they couldn't worship and the Maccabees um, Jewish brothers came forward and led this revolt and they won and they took back their temple and they needed to purify it and prepare it so that they could worship in it again. But they're supposed to have a candle lit from purified oil and they only had enough purified oil for one night. Well, the candle is supposed to stay lit, but in order to purify more oil, that can take up to eight nights. And so there's you know well do we light the candle if we can't keep it lit but they want to worship god their god again and so um they light the candle in the faith that they will find a way to keep it lit and that oil ends up lasting them for eight days so that's why there are eight nights of hanukkah and the soldier in the book tells george washington this whole story and it gives him hope that sometimes miracles can happen Sometimes you can survive things that you think that you can't. And it was really interesting to me because I'm reading the story and it's really, it's very understandable. If you have children, it's easy for them to understand as well, but it is based in fact. So there is an author's note at the end that I'm gonna read a little bit from. Um, it is known that in December, 1778, Washington had lunch at the home of Michael Hart, a Jewish merchant in Easton, Pennsylvania. It was the middle of Hanukkah, and when Hart began to explain that holiday to the general, Washington replied that he knew it already. He then told the merchant and his family of meeting a Polish soldier at Valley Forge the year before. It was Hart's stepdaughter, Louisa, who reportedly committed the story to her diary. Since Washington himself kept no diary during the war years, he has left no personal record of the event. Certainly, though, the story fits in with the curiosity and reactions Washington displayed on later occasions. So the fact that it is based in fact makes it makes it fascinating to me. And, and the illustrations are beautiful. There's a focus on the light in each picture, which Hanukkah is the festival of lights and you light the candle each night and remember the miracle that happened. So I just, it's just a really beautiful book. So if you're looking for a book for Hanukkah to either learn more about it or to share it with somebody, it's a good choice. So those are my two books with Holiday Spirit. And thank you to all of you who participated and share your Holiday Spirit books. Thank you to those who listened. And we will be back next week sharing our favorite reads from 2020. So we'll share that next time. Thank you. Bye. We wish you a Merry Christmas.